Hello, my friends. It's Chris Biffle, Coach B. This is program 563 on October 21st, 2013. We're broadcasting Oh So Live. We are now in our Whole Brain Teaching Masterclass, Week 7. Super Improvers, we want a reward for effort. Reward for improvement, not ability. That's a radical idea, but we'll show you how valuable it is. First, check out our book. Even if you don't have any challenging kids, you might want to go to Amazon.com and look up Whole Brain Teaching for Challenging Kids. Folks, if you love the book, tell us about it online right now. One hundred and seven thousand registered members, four million views on YouTube, ten million free pages downloaded. My friends, if you want to become certified, and who wouldn't, if you want to become a certified whole brain teaching educator. Go to the book club. Sarah Metter is online right now. She will put up a link to our Whole Brain Teaching book club. She'll also put up a link, because I know this gal. She'll put up a link to our certification document. We want to help you become better and better and better. For free. Yeah, don't you love those words? Here's my friend Biffy Bluebird. What if someone wants a copy of these slides, coach? Or needs a professional development certificate? And his alter ego, Smarty Wonderbeak, replies, Easy breezy, lemon squeezy. Details are at the end of this program. Who is watching these programs and getting professional development credit for it? Anybody using it that way? I bet some of you are. Let us know. All right, we're going to start with a story. It's story time on Whole Brain Teaching Television. Here's the story. Let's say there's a race between two kids, a fast kid and a slow kid. The fast kid wins the first day and the slow kid loses, no surprise. The fast kid gets an A, the slow kid gets needs improvement, and we know what that means, my friends. It means you failed, my friend. They keep racing, same winner, same loser again. Before long, the fast kid learns she doesn't have to run very hard to win, and the slow kid quits. Makes sense, right? Next chapter. Then something exciting happens. A WBT coach steps in. She says, new race. Fast kid, you get an A if you beat your best time. Slow kid, you get an A. If you beat your best time, go. Both kids now run as hard as they can. Every race, because the contest is fair. They're running against the perfect competitor themselves. Oh, yes, my friends. In school, we reward for ability. Fast kids always win, and slow kids always lose. Fast kids don't push very hard, and slow kids bail out. In WBT, we reward for improvement. Every child has an equal chance of success. 
from special ed to those heading for Harvard. Who thinks that is so zingy to reward for improvement, not ability? I bet a lot of you are online tonight just because you think that's a wonderful idea. Tell us about it. Is it zingy? Who's digging it? Now, how do we reward for improvement? That's the question, my friends. Here's what it looks like. We want a 10 level scale either as a PowerPoint or on the wall. Middle school teachers, I will show you how to adapt this for middle school on the fly. I've got a slide. I'm going to find it on my computer, and I'm going to put it right in the program. So notice a 10-level scale. And imagine those names are in alphabetical order. So you got the names of all the kids on the wall, those are your super improver teams, and a 10 level scale from lowest to highest. Now, the super improvers wall rewards individual students for progress in any classroom activity. Let's say you're not a sports nut like Coach B. Keep the scale but change the names. Like you like cats. You're one of those odd people who likes cats. So you start at Kitty and you go up to White Tiger. Has to be ascending, more and more exciting. Or you're a science nut. Start at Meteor. Go up to Cosmos. We got cat people online. Cat people, this is just for you. I'll make anybody happy, even a cat person. Do you like that white tiger, saber tooth, Bengal tiger, and tiger up there at the top? Whoa! All right, enough, enough with the cat people. Or... You're a science person like Andre Desch Hotel. You start with snail and go up to Geyer Falcon. A Geyer Falcon in a dive can hit over 100 miles an hour. Now, remember middle school and high school? I'm going to give you a version of the Super Improver before the broadcast is over. You're just gonna give me some slack and allow me to look on my computer. Now here's how you start. 10 level ascending scale, each level named in a different color. The names of every student in alphabetical order so you can find them. When a kid makes a significant improvement, give him a star. Ten stars changes a student's color moving up a level. Pay attention now. Look at this. Sam has earned 20 stars. He's a starter. Leroy has earned 10 stars, he's a phenom. Ty has learned a bunch of stars and she's got three more at the captain level. Do not move the names. Do not move the names, it's too much trouble. You'll be moving names all year. Change the color. I gotta find out, do you get that? Does everybody get you change the color, you don't move the names. As the color changes, that shows where they are on the scale. That's a kind of a new idea, and we just love it. 
<coughs> now, <coughs> how do you do the color change? You put everybody's name on a half a sheet of typing paper, white. When the kid gets 10 stars, you take their name off with the 10 stars on it. You give it to the kid. They take that home. You put up another colored piece of paper. Now this would be a chartreuse with the kid's name on it. You change the colors of the paper. Yes, there are 10 different colors of typing paper. Now if you want to go cheap, you want to go cheap, cheap and easy. Who's in a cheap and easy? You get 10 different colors of marker, and you keep the white sheets of paper, and just put up another white sheet of paper, and their name in a different color. I don't think that looks as jazzy. You just have to figure out a way to change colors. Now, what types of improvement are we talking about? Academic, reading speed, math facts, spelling, writing neatness, homework, oral writing, because clapper, anything. Social, <laughs> playground, politeness, keeping their hands to themselves, lining up, random acts of kindness, anything. Rule number one or two, full turn, big gestures, mighty oh yeah, mighty grow, anything. For those who have experience with this, like Kate, Lindsay Rausch, others, <coughs> what are you rewarding for on the super improvers wall? Tell us, what are you using? Are you focusing in on one or two things or several things? Eating a better lunch, that's great. Showing strong evidence, says Lindsay Roush. Rule and two, rule one and two, says Terry. Academic and homework. Angela's just focusing on one thing per level. Entering the room quietly, be prepared with your supplies, says Ragalar. <sighs> Sitting crisscross applesauce, says Angela. Personal responsibility. Bathroom behavior. All right. Now listen to me. Listen. Don't get ahead of me. First, we're going to start with one or two rules for the whole class. I'll show you how to develop this. Here we go. In the beginning, give lots of praise for a pattern of improvement and very few stars. That makes the stars very valuable. Mid-year, increase the star awards, keep the game tight. No one is left far behind. End of the year, it's raining stars. <coughs> now. I suggest you start out with just two goals, put them on the wall. One, follow directions quickly. Everyone can improve on that. And two, writing neatness. So you're going to have some goals initially for everybody. What is it that you want everyone to improve on that you can measure every day? Then as the game advances, as you'll see, you're going to dial it into individual behavior. So step one, couple of goals for the whole class. Step two, dial it into individuals. And I like Lindsay Rausch's <clears throat> emphasis on using evidence in their answers. <coughs> Lindsay, you're right. Tons of stars during state testing time. <clears throat> Now, we've set this up 
So there's, there's always three levels. Terry BR, you start step two whenever your teacher's intuition tells you you should. I'd say a couple of weeks. Here's the super improvers, rookie super improvers. When you want students to improve in any academic or social skill, give them lots of praise for improving, then reward with a star. Students celebrate when a classmate improves. Students are motivated to advance up the ladder and start of the year, lots of praise, few stars. Here's our mastery challenge. Keep track of this. You've advanced to the rookie level early in the year if you're awarding about five to seven stars a week. Lindsay, Kate, Southern teacher, you guys have used this. How many stars are you awarding per week? What I'm going to do now is I want you to talk to each other about the strengths of this program. And I'm going to quickly search through my computer so you'll see a mess on screen to find the <clears throat> version for middle school teachers. So I'm going to look very quickly. I'm going to look for the <laughs> middle school teachers version. And I found it. And now I'm hurrying back right here. And I'm putting it in. Wow. I impressed myself. On the fly, I've solved the problems of middle school teachers across America. Here's the problem, middle school teachers. you got 200 kids. You know what I'm saying? How do you use super improvers while with 200 kids? There's two ways to go. Some of our middle school friends are just using PowerPoint slides, a different PowerPoint, for every period. You should be paying attention to what your kids to improve on. But here's another version. Super Improvers League. <coughs> One period against the other. Pick out five or six kids. Put their names up on your PowerPoint slide. Those are the, your leaders, and when they're doing a good job or encouraging others to do a good job, the period gets a star. Yes, Bo Armand, you're on the right track. Or a period goes against itself, which is a great idea where, by Sarah Matter. Listen to this. Pay attention to Sarah Matter every once in a while. But this is a great idea from her. So you're looking at the period, and they're improving based upon their own previous behavior. Give them a star. But here's the deal. If you've got 200 kids and six periods or whatever, five stars moves up a color. So the colors change, just like with individuals, but now it's the whole period. Here's the deal. Don't reward for ability. That's built into the grade system. Reward for improvement. Pay attention to Blizzard as well. She's using this in middle school. Important point. When a student earns a star, give them 10 finger woos with lightning sizzles. When a student advances to a higher level, have a special celebration and an award, maybe even a sticker. 
In addition, students take their name signs home, showing their parents the 10 improvement stars. You know our position on junk. We don't give away junk until we have to. So you know what a big deal is. Is it taking off the glasses big deal when coach says you could give them something? I think when they've had 10 improvements, you might think about giving them a sticker. Maybe you would save the stickers to level three or four. But don't give away stuff for anything else. I got one more sticker idea tonight. And you know I never talk about stickers or candy or any other junk. But think about it. All right. Here's our next point. This is a Magnifico idea, not just a regular idea, Magnifico. In general, begin the Super Improver team with one or two class goals. Goals for everyone. Two good suggestions for these goals would be improving at Rule 1, as I said, and improving writing neatness. Somebody online wants to know what a lightning sizzle is. I'm going to show you. Here's a lightning sizzle. Woo! Zzzz. See? Oh, yeah. Who wouldn't love a lightning sizzle? On a Saturday morning? Woo! Change your goals as you wish. But put them on the board so that all the students know the Super Improver class focus. After a few weeks, start giving individual Super Improver goals. Academic, behavior, or WBT. Wow, people want to see the lightning sizzle again. Here it goes, my friend. I'm stepping back. You better step back from your screen. Lightning sizzle. I'm tilting my screen down. Woo! Would that make a kid's day? I think so. Now here's the pro level of super improvers. Pro level. When you want your challenging students to improve, assign individual easy to achieve goals for the challenging kids and others. They'll strive for these individual and class goals and the challenging kids begin to advance. As challenging kids buy in, give them a list of goals, let them to choose one to work on. I'm gonna emphasize this tonight. Of course this is for all your kids, but you have a special place in your heart for the challenging kids because they need the most from you, but they're also the ones that have a tendency, I'll say it, to hijack the rest of the class. Let's just talk about challenging kids for a second. It is the number one, according to me, underreported teaching problem in the world. Our problem is not reading. Our problem is not writing. Our problem is not math. Our problem is not critical thinking. Our problem is our dear challenging kids who are hijacking the class. That's why we focus on it. But then we found out when you find some techniques that help our challenging kids who might someday be great leaders, they're leaders already, when you find techniques to help them, it's magic for everybody else. Now, here's some evidence of why the challenging kid problem is number one. Veteran teachers, rookie teachers. Your challenging kid is absent. What's teaching like in the classroom when that kid isn't there? Tell me. I'm going to read some responses. It's heaven. Best day of my life. Peaceful, smiles, beautiful. You get more done. It's chocolate. It's heaven. It's teacher heaven. So much gets done. Yes. And the thing is, is that education departments, 
principals, administrators, coaches, they don't know what to do about challenging kids. That's been our main focus. But what warms our heart is, is that when you find a technique that will engage your least engaged kids, it's an educational ice cream party for everybody else. Here's your mastery challenge for the super improver pro level. You've advanced to the pro level as super improver team when about a third of your class has individually assigned goals. Huge point coming. Huge point. The Super Improvers team is one of WBT's most powerful games for reforming rebel students, your most challenging kids. Wait until your rebel sees other kids earning stars and moving up the ladder. Then give your rebel the goal of improving a simple to and fixed behavior. Like putting your feet on the desk, for example. When your rebels meet their easy goals, give them a quick star. And bingo, bango, bongo, they're on their way with everyone else toward becoming living legends. One more thing. <clears throat> One more thing. Look at me, my friends. Occasionally, I take off my teaching hat. There, I took it off. And I just talk to you from the heart. I'm talking from the heart now. <clears throat> For 40 years, I made a mistake. I don't want you to make it. Every semester, I had kids. And we we're on the same wavelength. Like, they came in, I was there, and boom, together. And I said to myself, I never want to forget this kid. And I forgot him. I would give anything to have a picture of the kids who changed my heart. This is the point I'm going to make right now, and it's related to super improvers. Tell your kids, when they become living legends, you're going to put their picture on your wall, and as long as you teach, wherever you go, you will never forget them. They will be with you always, living legends looking down on generations of rookies. Do that. Tell them. If you make living legend, my friend, I'll never forget you. They might say, Coach, what about kids who get to the top of the living legend? What do you do about them? I'm putting on my cards hat just for luck for the cards. When they get to living legend gold, there's living legend platinum, living legend diamond, living legend starfire. You know what I'm saying? It just goes on up straight to teaching heaven. So, Here's my question for my online experts. By the end of the year, <clears throat> how many kids achieve living legend? Those of you who are using this, especially names in red, how many kids make it to living legend? Let's see. <coughs> one, says Lindsay. Two, says Lindsay. Giselle says one. Kate. One in two years. One time you had four. Sarah says only one. That's the way it should be. That's what makes a living legend a living legend. But lots were close. All right. What do we do? Terry, Teeter, you set it up however you want, but you're talking about a 100 improvements in the course of a year. It's your classroom. Here's the deal. I don't think anybody has seen this. At the all-star level, usually after Christmas break, turn the Super Improvers team into a living legend odyssey. As complex and more rewarding 
than any video game. Living Legend Odyssey. Power-ups. When students advance into the last five levels, they gain bonus powers. When they became a superstar, they get to be line leader for a day. MVP, line leader for two days. Star, one day homework pass. Hall of Fame, sit with a friend all day. Living Legend, have lunch with the teacher, teacher's treat. These are some brand new ideas. Who's digging the idea of having special power-ups like in a video game from the middle of the year onward? Who's going to try it after Christmas? I want to know. Power-ups. Comes from video games. You see that? You can make it into a video game. Look at those again. Let me just force some of these things to quit here, my friends. Maybe the broadcast will be a little bit cleaner. All right. Now, more video game features. Living Legend Rolls. Ninja Spy. So you give advancing students roles. A ninja spy spies on classmates, notes who is improving, puts their name and deeds in the ninja spy box, and then you read those. Five-star rule commander. You let a kid lead the classroom rules rehearsals. Power squadrons. Two or more players form a team, creating a plan to help the team improve. You see? Listen. Listen to me. Don't go in tomorrow and show all the stuff in your back pocket. Wait till after Christmas. Then go in with the idea of one power-up or two power-ups or assign some roles. We love a big back pocket. Here's some more roles you could assign. Secret Improver. This is my favorite. Put SI for Secret Improver on several students' names. Assign them Secret Improver goals. And this works great for Rebels. Especially when secret improvers are not your only are not your are not only for the rebels. This is brand new. Sarah Metter, Kate, Southern teacher, Andre, they've never seen this. Principal for a day. I'm just stopping there. How do you like that? Principal for a day as a role a kid could play. Just the title. Principal for a day when you advance to superstar. Dig it? Zingy? L. Roush says, yikes. Here's Principal Andre says, wowzers. That's Louisiana for Yahoo. Here's Principal for a day. The kid who's Principal for a day uses a checklist to note the most energetic students, praises them during recess, and gives them a sticker. Yeah. That's my second sticker award. Principal for a day. Now. Oh, 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 brand new. One day the kids come in. I'm taking off the glasses and I'm taking off the hat. One day the kids come in and there's a new name on the wall. Mysterion. That's the new name. Mysterion. And as the days unfold, Mysterion starts getting stars. And when the kids are really good, you let them try to guess. Who is Mysterion? 
who's the one who's getting the stars? Don't you just love that, Mysterion? Putting the hat back on. Mysterion? Whoa! My friends, who is Mysterion? I'm taking a drink. I think some of you are, are clever enough to guess. Who is Mysterion? Ms. Tyrion, that's good. Terry Cox! Woo! Terry Cox, you are so right. You are Mysterion. You give yourself stars as you improve, meeting your own goals as a teacher. Every few days when your kids are especially good, Invite them to guess the identity of Mysterion. Only one guess. Can you dig that? I'm telling you, the super improvers game of everything we do. <coughs> is amazing. Keep it in your back pocket. All right. How do you keep track of all this stuff? You make a tally sheet, and you put it up there. Scoreboard, class yes, mirror words, super improver. Use the tally. If they guess, you give them a 10-finger lightning sizzle. Use the tally sheet to keep track of your, of your whole brain teaching bag. Rewarding for improvement should be our number one teaching goal. If you reward for improvement, see our number one teaching goal is test scores. Duh. I'll say it again. Duh. If our number one teaching goal is test scores, we could take care of that by rewarding for improvement and make the kids feel good. They learn something even more important. I'll tell you the most important thing they can learn in your class in two seconds. Check it out. Rewarding for improvement <laughs> removes the grade-based caste system, which puts our intellectually weakest students at the bottom of academia's society. It is perfectly differentiated because every student has an individualized goal. <coughs> It motivates every child, no matter their academic ability, and teaches every student one of life's most energizing lesson, I am a personal record breaker. And it's stinking fun. That's the most important thing your kids can learn. No matter where I am, I'm a personal record breaker. And I'll tell you this. It is normal for your smart kids to get aggravated. Well, I'm sorry, my friend. You're only reading two levels above grade. Get war and peace and get started. Here's the saddest story, I think, in teaching. You have a smart kid two grade levels above. In a few years, they're only one grade level above. And then you hear the story that when they become juniors in high school, they're dropouts. Why? Because we didn't have a system that challenged every kid at every level. So yeah, your smart kids will get aggravated. They're not improving. Tell them what they need to improve on. So here's the three levels. Rookie, five to seven stars a week. Pro, a third of the class has individual goals. And challenging kids are assigned easy to achieve goals. All-star, get going with the living legend odyssey with power-ups and character roles. Here's the review. Attention getters. Mirrors, classroom rules, 
rule implementation, teach, okay. Just look at that screen, my friend. Anybody who's been to more than one webcast, tell me. Which of these should you be using and you're not? <clears throat> Which of these that we've covered should you be using and you're not using it? Mirrors, says Melanie. Marsh 12 says he's using all of them. Somebody bowed their head in shame because they're not using mirrors enough. Somebody says they stink at the scoreboard. Well, thanks for your honesty, Manuel. All right. Lots more. Here's the scoreboard and the super improvers. <clears throat> yes. That's what we've covered so far. You have no idea what's coming next week. Nobody does except Coach. Brain fat. All right, pay attention. This is huge. Every week we're going to have a brain fact segment. <clears throat> For the last 30 years, psychologist Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi, that's how you pronounce it, has explored optimal creative and learning experiences. He terms these experiences flow. Artists, scientists, athletes, hobbyists, children at play, students, computer programmers in flow become so pleasurably absorbed in the task at hand that they lose all sense of time. The key to flow is that one's ability must be slightly exceeded by the challenge of the activity. Anybody out there heard about flow, this ideal, optimal mode of attention? If the task is too hard, we panic. If the task is too easy, we're bored. If the task is a challenge to our skills but can still be mastered, we happily flow. Video games are wonderful producers of flow, especially those whose unfolding difficulty is only slightly greater than our skill. So Mihaly Csikszentmihalyi examined lots of different professions looking for when people were the happiest. And he found that it didn't matter whether they were building stone walls or writing computer programs. They were the happiest when they were addressing a challenge that they could master. Oh, ah, hmm, yes, oh, oh. Four hours passed. That's flow. Now, given that definition, who in my online audience doing what has experienced flow? What activity is so fascinating to you that you lose all sense of time. It's a challenge, but you can meet the challenge. Let's see what the online audience has to say. <clears throat> Teaching kindergarten, reading a good book, quilting, as an artist, beading, doing WBT, knitting, discussing literature, math, says Yamagram, doctoral work, computer technology, painting, contour drawing. Yes, we've experienced flow. So let's keep exploring this interesting concept and as it relates to whole brain teaching. So there's four categories here. Watch my marker. High challenge, low skill, you feel a panic. Low challenge, but low skill, you feel anxiety. Low challenge, high skill, boredom, High challenge, high skill flow. This is where we want our kids. Here's some examples. Let's say you're a rookie chef in a great restaurant. High challenge, low skill, you're in panic mode. You're a first time cook and you're flipping burgers. Oh, you're so worried. Not much of a challenge. But baby, you haven't got much skill. Anxiety, worry. 
Let's say you're a master chef flipping burgers. And too many of our kids are master chefs flipping burgers. Low challenge, high skill, you're bored. High challenge, high skill, master chef and a, master chef and a great restaurant. Then you're really flowing, baby. Let's look for some more examples online of flow. Who's had flow experiences? Yes, my friends. Here's this, oh, sewing. Zumba, says somebody. Competing at the roller derby. Running, that's flowing, my friends. Here's some more examples. You're a student pianist attempting Tchaikovsky in a competition. High challenge, low skill, panic. You're a novice piano player trying chopsticks in front of an audience. Not much of a skill, not much of a challenge. You're a great pianist playing chopsticks in an empty room. Boy, are you bored. Great pianist playing Tchaikovsky before a huge audience. That's flow. All right. So we have the idea that what we should be shooting for are these flow experiences. High challenge, high skill. Now, I'm going to go out on a limb here. Practice of any activity thickens the myelin sheath around the brain's dendrites, making nerve impulses stronger. Here's my diagram. You see, here are the dendrites. This myelin sheath is around the axon. So check that. Not the dendrites. It's around the axon. As you practice, the myelin sheath gets thicker and thicker and thicker, which means the nerve impulse becomes stronger and stronger and stronger. Now I'm going to put this together with flow in a second. Here it is. Going out on a limb, perhaps flow is the ideal way to thicken myelin sheaths. And further out on a limb, perhaps super improver activities in which students strive to break personal records are flow producing myelin sheath thickening activities. So try it. Figure out what's going to induce flow in your kids. Oh, here's Ms. Linenthal. Gosh, coach, super improver sounds great, but how could I get professional development credit for this broadcast and a copy of these slides? Here's how you do it, Ms. Linenthal. We got a little bit more program left. Go to wholebrainteaching.com. Click on the PayPal button and put down $5.63. And I've been getting these back to people within 24 hours. I will send you a link with all of the slides and a professional development certificate. See, here's the PayPal thing at wholebrainteaching.com. Here's a certificate. and more certificate. Now next week, you're going to be excited because it's a big honkin' review all about everything you've learned in the master class. <laughs> Who's excited for a seven-week review in the eighth week? Tell me my online friends, seven week review in the eighth week. And we'll play a review game next week, my friends. We'll play You Bet Your Wibby. So you get to see the big picture next week. If you want an on-site seminar, send me an email. And yes, you can access the first six weeks. 
Chris Bivel at WholeBrainTeaching.com. Now, you know we're not done. Zingy bonus. Wacky photo madness. And my dear friend Sarah may have given away this zingy bonus. Pay attention. When students advance to the fourth level on the Super Improvers team, encourage them to make a wacky face and take their photo. Bring the picture in, stare at it, and say, gee, what a wonderful wacky face. Wish you could see it. Put the photo on the Super Improver team wall, face to the wall. When the student earns 10 more stars, she gets to turn it around. Follow the same procedure at level eight. But this time, let the student choose a friend to make wacky faces with. Now the photo only gets turned around when both friends advance to a higher level. So you got kids putting pressure on each other to improve. And here is another zingy bonus. Mystery thing lessons. We started these last week and I want you to try them. <coughs> Listen. 